Carrie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Um, maybe um, let us know a little bit about your careers as well as why you're interested in, or why you were interested in becoming editors of the Writing Center Journal. Okay. Well, thank you for having us, first off. Um, my name's Steve Price, and I teach uh, in our writing program here at Mississippi College in Clinton, Mississippi. Uh, I've been here for about 11 years altogether. I've directed our writing center uh, starting back in 1999. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Carrie Jordan. Um, I've been here at Mississippi College for 12 years and have been involved in writing centers um, longer than that. I did some dissertation research at Louisiana State University with a writing center emphasis and worked as a writing center peer tutor prior to, um, to all of that. Um, Clint, you'd asked a little bit about um, our interests, the reasons why we were interested in, in um, working with a journal. And um, part of that interest for me stemmed from a frustration with, um, with research I felt wasn't extremely rigorous um, in the writing center community. And so um, I had a, a vision that Steve shared and Michelle shared um, for the journal to become um, a sh more of a showcase for the really high quality, um, high quality research that we could share with our readers. Do you want to say more? Sure. Um, one of the, the things that we've tried to do with the journal or that we're interested in doing with the journal is, I guess, uh, expanding the scope of it. Um, we, we would like to elevate the work that's in it, whether it's empirical research or philosophical or uh, whatever sort of methods people are using, we'd like to elevate it. But we'd also like it to expand its reach. And so uh, we're trying to get more people involved with the journal. Um, kind of like your chat here, we've um, started a Writing Center Journal Live, kind of a monthly webinar that we're doing with different authors who have been published in the journal to give people the opportunity to talk with the authors, not only about their articles themselves, but about uh, their process of writing and researching. Uh, so hopefully then the authors can become mentors or models for, for other authors uh, to help us elevate our work that way. Uh, we're trying to make more um, appearances at conferences and to, to interact with authors that way, both to encourage them to make submissions to the journal. Uh, to talk with them about publication expectations, uh, those sort of things. So partly, again, mentorship and partly to help elevate our work. Clint, Michelle texted us that she's having trouble getting on. Um, I don't know if you have a chance. You might shoot her an email with any kind of pointers. She was asking if she needs a plug-in. <laughs> Just FYI. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I don't know if I'll have time to email her back, but um, if you do have a chance, you can let her know that it has a hard time with Chrome. Try Firefox. I'll let her know. Thanks. Thanks. Um, in thinking in terms of the, you know, I mean, there's been a, a, a shift in certainly the last areas with Lauren and and Melissa towards more of a evidence-based research um, with, you know, writing center journal articles. There was that great article in, I think it was, it was sometime last year that, that, that did an outline of the types of articles that were, that were in the journal and, and only, what was it, a less than 20% were ultimately evidence-based um, or research-based. Mm -hmm. um, kind of articles. Um, maybe let's start there is, is that, you know, what role or what kind of, where is the field going as far as that, as far as evidence-based research goes? Are we moving away from our more um, traditional lore-based? And I want to get back to the lore thing in a, in, a, in a minute too, but, you know, where, where do you envision the field going right now? Um, yeah, we'll leave it there. So that was the Dana Driscoll and Sherry Wynn Purdue a RAD article, uh, which really was uh, impressive. It was the IWCA award winner for last year as well. Um, and what was really neat about it was partly their um, their own method was so good uh, as they as they did that empirical research to uncover what had been published in Writing Center Journal. Uh, and then they were also advocating for our own RAD work, so replicable, replicable aggregable, and data supported. 
Um, and it's really taken off. I think it's really resonated with people. Um, partly, it's it's a good article in that it explains some of these concepts and, and their applicability to writing centers. So um, I think it has a lot of potential that way, and I think it is helping people to elevate some work. Um, and that's one direction we can go um, with you know, more evidence behind our um, assertions and our arguments and our own work so that we're, our, we're informing our work with with some real substantial evidence. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that it necessarily has to um, be the, at the, at getting rid of other types of um, work that we do, our use of narrative and practical sort of applications as well. I think that's always going to be part of writing mm -hmm. centers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do. Um, I feel like the, the culture may be shifting a little bit. And I wonder if, um, well, I wonder if we can anticipate a bigger shift maybe 10 years or so out with the undergraduate research initiatives mm -hmm. that are kind of taken off right now. It, it seems to me that we're going to have students from stronger research backgrounds who had off undergraduate programs um, better prepared to do a higher level work earlier in their careers. Um, and as we see um, as we see writing center directors and, and staff with um, I guess with stronger backgrounds from their graduate programs, I would only expect that that we're looking up, right, in terms of what we can do with empirical research now. The idea, I just, I feel like this, um, this younger group who's coming through and doing research already, right, with strong methodologies, um, even at the undergraduate level, I think that's going to help us with this sort of culture change. But I also think Steve's right, right? We're never going to give up our stories, and we're never going to give up um, our, I guess, our, our sense that, um, that it's worth, and it's, it's well, well founded, right? A sense that to talk about our practice is also an important thing to do. And those conversations don't always have to be um, right, anchored in empirical research every single time. One of the things related to that that we're trying to encourage is simply uh, using the research we currently have out there. So in the Writing Center community, starting to build more on our own work. And so mm -hmm. one of the neat things with the a RAD article is that people are using it. And mm -hmm. it's being quoted in a lot of the submissions that we're getting. Uh, and so we're starting to see that aggregability, I suppose you could call it, where we're actually using each other's work mm -hmm. uh, and not just relying on a, you know, a, couple, a handful of uh, articles and studies from the past. Cool, thanks. Um, and again, if you're interested in um, um, joining in the conversation, you can either either do what uh, Brandy Lind and Jessica have and connect up your, your microphone and talk to us that way, or you can type in a text question or comment if you got, um, if you want to do it that way as well, and I'll read out those. Um, but following on with that, um, the, the previous editors um, had a special issue um, devoted to undergraduate research. I'm curious, are you going to have anything like that? Do you have any plans for undergraduate research, or are you going to make it um, a sort of traditional event, I suppose? It happens every, every year, maybe? I don't know. That might be a bit much. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure. Um, our first issue is is kind of a handoff issue from the previous editors, right? So we're sort of at the point right now to um, to begin making decisions about um, what we envision for for our future issues. But we're kind of right in the middle of an issue that got handed off to us. Um, I really I really value that, um, that, you know, the undergraduate issue that came out recently. And I I just don't know, right? I'm not sure if that's um, if that's the direction that we would that we would take in the couple of years that we have. But it seems to me that, that there's room for undergraduate work in any issue, right, yeah. of writing center journal if it's very strong undergraduate work, right? And so I wonder about the integration of those pieces um, into, into an issue that's not just for them, right? There's also kind of a, um, a an othering that happens, mm -hmm. right, when we say this is just well, right, this is the undergraduate issue. So um, we certainly invite submissions from undergraduates, and we're real invested in the, um, the interactions that we have with writers, so we're glad to give feedback to those undergraduate projects, um, whether they make it all the way into publication with us or not. What do you think, Steve? Well, another Actually. option there, um, in terms of special issues and things like that, we're trying to let those emerge kind of naturally, depending on what we're seeing in terms of submissions and things. And so um, we don't have any plans yet for the continuing that, but 
it's a possibility too mm -hmm. if we have some interest. But another option there we'd like to encourage are some collaborative projects. And mm -hmm. so we're all writing centers, as you know, have a lot of collaborative work going on, and a lot of the submissions that we see are dual authors. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that's um, professors and graduate students, and there's no reason that couldn't also be directors, writing center people, and undergraduates yeah. and tutors and things like that. So. Uh, there's some real opportunities there that we'd like to encourage. Yeah, one of my favorite um, articles from from previous issues of the journal is the tutors um, taking on Turn It In, right? Yeah. Do you guys remember that one? Um, which was which was a collaborative piece and, and very tutor um, driven, right? Yeah. The research yeah. had a, um, was also guided by by a, a director advisor, but um, a really smart piece, right? Another award winner. Another, yeah, another award winner. So we do. We hope to see some submissions, right, um, from our undergraduate community for sure, right, yeah. or from from mixed communities, right, undergraduate, graduate students working together. Yeah. Yeah. And we certainly encourage um, if if there are undergraduates out there or graduate students too who are interested in publishing, uh, but aren't familiar with the process yet. Uh, we really do want to try to educate our community more and, and get people more involved. I think so often journals have been um, just where you send something off and there's a mystery to it and, and you get something back you know, a declining or accepting and you're really not sure why. And um, we'd really like to make that more accessible mm -hmm. and help educate people on what the process is like mm -hmm. and um, how you can negotiate it more effectively. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that actually might be a good place to, to go right now is what, what do you envision or what is your process, submission process? Um, that might help demystify it for folks who are interested in presenting or presenting. In, yeah, good question. In, sending right now we're pretty traditional in that we, um, we, we're waiting for people to send us their submissions. Uh, with three editors, it's, it's interesting. We have a collaboration naturally occurring, and so all three of us read each article. And then we uh, talk about it and decide what our next step will be. And so uh, we have a variety of options there. We can uh, send it out for review to some of our uh, peer reviewers, and that's for blind review. Uh, we can also send it back to the authors, maybe with our own suggestions, uh, if we want to encourage some revision, if it's not quite ready for sending it out for peer review. Um, and we might even decline at that point. Um, but in any of those stages, we always want to give some real thorough feedback to the authors. And so um, we try to give them some real clear ideas of what we were seeing and suggestions that we have. Mm -hmm. Or ideas for other publications, mm -hmm. right, that might be more suited to their content. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but we're trying, to, um, we're trying to really avoid the sort of cryptic, we're sorry, <laughs> we, we, don't, you know, we don't have a publishing opportunity for this piece right now. We want to really help students, oh, sorry, really help writers see um, what we're seeing in their text that's valuable and what we're seeing in their text that, um, that we think could be improved upon. So after we send it out for review, uh, depending on um, how many reviewers we send it to, two or three re reviewers oftentimes, that's done blind review. And so um, if you're not familiar with that, um, the reviewers don't know who the authors are. So uh, they're just evaluating the actual content uh, of the of the manuscript itself. And the authors don't know who the reviewers are, Correct. right? They just know Correct. that their piece has been, we inform them that their piece has gone on to another level of review. And that's real traditional um, academic scholarship that we follow. Uh, to us, that's where the process gets really interesting because we get to hear from other people uh, their thoughts on the manuscript. And we try to send it to people with some real knowledge in the area mm -hmm. of the topic. and so. Uh, we have some really skillful readers in the Writing Center community, and already just this year, uh, we've gotten some really, I would say, strong feedback mm -hmm. from reviewers on different manuscripts. Mm -hmm. uh, our job at that point as editors is to uh, look at the comments and the suggestions that the reviewers are making. We ask them to not only describe um, the manuscript and give us their impressions, but also to make a recommendation. Uh, whether we should uh, publish it, uh, send it back for a revision, uh, or decline. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we'll see some differing uh, uh, 
perspectives on those manuscripts. And so our job at that point as editors is to uh, try to weigh the different information that we're getting, mm -hmm. and uh, as well as our own readings, mm -hmm. and get a sense of what we want to do next. And so that's when we make a decision on uh, what we'll do with the manuscript, whether it's decline it, accept it, or send it back for further revision. Yeah, we also try to um, to pull together those comments from the peer reviewers um, hmm. in a way that, that maybe helps a, a, a writer see um, how to sort through. I mean, those are long responses sometimes that, um, that can point in lots of different potential revision directions. And um, sometimes it's hard, I don't know, as, as, as a recipient of those, con of those comments myself, right? I know it's sometimes hard to see which comments should I privilege, right? It's sort of like the writing center session when you've had all these conversations with your tutor and there are these many different possibilities for this paper. So we, um, we don't want to give writers the impression that every single point in that must be sending the draft in different you know, in different directions. Um, so we, we try to help sort of prioritize um, what what um, I guess the consensus was about major things that needed to be improved um, or well or, or to help them see um, at least which things that, that we feel are, are most important, right? If if it's gonna make it into the journal, right? The things that we would we would especially like to see them work on. Um, but we were also really open to um, to drafts that, that take on new lives. Sometimes we see um, the potential for multiple pieces, right, to be carved out of one, mm. one particular manuscript. And and certainly that's the writer's choice, right? Which piece might she carve or does she want to maintain that whole the whole piece? So we try to help them see um, sort of our take, but still leave lots of room for the writer to make her own decisions about the next round of revisions. Ah, it looks like Michelle's joined us finally. She was having technical problems. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle, if you click on the start broadcasting thing, it should bring up all the camera stuff and whatnot. Um, I know it's and at this point, um, do we have any questions? Let's see, we've got again Brandy Lynn, Jessica, Andrew, um, Anne. Any questions, comments uh, that you would like to make? Please join in. You can either type them in the text box or Saying out loud. Can you hear me? Well, lucky for you, I have another question. Oh, okay. Oh, um, I, heard you. I, just, Go ahead. I had my mic turned off so it wouldn't be too echoey. Um, I'm Brandy, by the way. <laughs> so, um, or Brandy, Brandy, as I like to put in. Um, I guess I had a question because the last uh, chat that I was at was with uh, Jackie Gretsch McKinney. And so I've been thinking about those, what she describes as the grand narratives of our work. And so listening to you talk about um, where you see the journal going and where you see the field is, then I wonder, I guess, how does maybe this privilege or respond to the narrative we have of telling ourselves we need to professionalize our field in particular ways. Does that, and I'll shut my mic off so everybody can hear. I'm not, we've talked a lot about her book um, in that I think it really kind of complements our own vision. Um, what in our own conversations with Carrie and Michelle and I, um, Jackie's book really forces us to examine some of these assumptions that we have. And maybe because we're so so narrative-based in writing centers, um, I, I think sometimes we tell these stories without really one, examining them. And we make some assumptions that, as she showed, um, don't always have to hold. And so um, in the Writing Center Journal, what we're trying to ask people to do is to uh, ask those same questions, but then really look at the evidence and, and try to get some more specific, realistic answers. Um, in terms of professionalism, um, I'm not really sure I understand the question. Yeah, so Brandy Lynn, help us understand um, how, how, how are you seeing the professionalism issue? 
Oh, well, I guess what I was seeing or thinking of was, um, and maybe maybe I'm reading this wrong, but an, but an idea that as a field we need to um, define ourselves. Maybe that's a better way to think mm -hmm. about it is the defining of the field and that maybe this, uh, and I don't necessarily think, I don't mean to say this as if it's a bad thing, but maybe the the idea of the rad research and turning to these these more empirical modes of research it reflects an attempt to make our professional visible in um, mm -hmm. traditional uni university ways. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and so I was just um, I guess I, like I said I've been thinking about these stories that we tell ourselves. And um, I think that's one of the stories we tell ourselves that um, I wonder about because we've been we have a rich history as a field, and I I do like what you're all what we're seeing of drawing more on each other's work. So we have this history. We have we are professionalized, but maybe not in ways that other places in the university recognize. Does it? I don't, maybe I'm just rambling and <laughs> thinking out loud. But, so I was curious about. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So are you so say that again. Which person? Well, we can, um, one of the things that I'm discovering or realizing is in writing centers, I think a lot of times our audience is almost exclusively our own selves. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, and, we, and we can oftentimes be easy to convince. And so I think W Center is a really good example of that where um, the, the narrative so often is here's what I do in my writing center and it works. And, and, that, and that can be really useful. I mean, we share ideas that way and we encourage and we support. And um, it's a very positive environment. Um, but what I'm realizing with the journal is there are other audiences out mm -hmm. there. And so we also, I, I think, want to be aware of how we per, are perceived by uh, other disciplines and other departments and other mm -hmm. places on campus. Um, and it's not always as positively. And mm -hmm. so I don't know that it's that we lack professionalism, but I think we need to better understand how different disciplines perceive our professionalism. Yeah, and I'm not so worried about um, about perception, although I, I certainly find value in that. Um, but I'm not so worried about perception in other areas as I am um, sort of the improving the work that we do. You know, I I'm, um, I stomp my feet and get grumpy sometimes that um, that we do have these conversations about this thing that works and that thing that works and this, you know, this thing that we know when realistically we have very little, you know, concrete evidence to prove that, that we tutor effectively, mm -hmm. for example, right? Um, so I think, I don't know, for me it's, it's that um, Writing centers do certainly have an identity, but I think back, like the um, like Brandilyn was mentioning, the, the Gretchen McKinney book right now. You know, we have an identity, but I'm I'm not sure it's an identity that um, that we, that we're really fully aware of um, the complexities of. Right? I I feel like we don't we don't quite know exactly what we do. We just think that we know what we do. Writing centers are, are such an interesting community, and I, I do think we need to be careful. Um, on one hand, we have people coming out of PhD programs and with, with doctorates and uh, advanced degrees and, and, and that community um, to, to the full continuum of undergraduate tutors mm -hmm. and first year undergraduate tutors mm -hmm. uh, and really everybody in between from staff to professors to experienced people to inexperienced people. Or high school tutors. High right. school tutors, right, even, even younger. And that's just something that a lot of disciplines don't face. Um, the medical field doesn't have the undergraduate doctor mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know, performing surgery or something. And so I, I think in our community we want to make sure that we're 
not excluding anyone, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we also don't want that to hold us back mm -hmm. from sort of elevating ourselves as well. So in a, in a lot of ways, there's a lot of balls up in the air that we're trying to juggle, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to follow on with, with where Brandon was going. I think the, you know, the idea of professionalizing the field versus, you know, our expansive nature. And, you know, my questions about allowing for more undergraduate research in the, in the journal um, or to focus on it. Um, you know, how does that, how does that all fit? Isn't it, you know, you made the good analogy with, say, the medical field, but, you know, ultimately, you know, what we're doing is so much, it, is encompassing in the sense that the people who work in writing centers are learners as well, versus, you know, the people who work in hospitals may not necessarily be learners, yeah. even though, of course, they are learning something um, every time they they engage with the patient, I suppose. But um, I'm curious, is, is in the past, I think the writing center field has is, is kind of pushed away its, its, you know, the focus on peer tutoring and, and development of peer tutors and, and peer tutor contributions for the sake of professionalizing, right, and saying that we have this select few or something like that. I don't know. That's, that's an exaggeration. But who will go into the field and lead the field? I'm curious how... Is that something we can study and think about and negotiate um, and understand how our field is kind of unique in that sense that we have a variety of scholars from different backgrounds um, and different levels working? I wonder if part, I think Michelle was going to say something. Michelle? Hey, Michelle, I think your mic might be off. You might have to hit the talk button. Yep, you're still off, it looks like. You should have to go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Stephen, uh, Sherry, well, uh, uh, well, while she's yeah. trying to figure well, that out, one of the, you know, in terms of the impact that undergraduate researchers are having, um, the Peer Writing Tutor Alumni Research Project and the surveys that are going out to alumni um, to get a sense of what they're doing after they leave the writing centers, I think, is is a really um, useful way uh, to explore that. What I like about that survey is I think it plays on our strengths of a, as our community. Um, this, if, you, if you've seen the survey, it's a lot of open-ended questions and we invite the stories and we want to hear like people describing what they've been doing. Um, but it's also a way to start quantifying some of that information and getting a bigger, a better sense of the overall picture. Mm -hmm. So I think we're close to finding out, you know, what impact the Writing Center is having and research as well. Yeah, I've, I've, um, I've gotten myself really caught up from year to year, I think, in, in thinking about that, the tension between um, bringing in newcomers, right, um, for our conferences, for example, the conferences that are, are shared, right, the tutors are there, all, you know, and, and all the way up, right, um, if I think in terms of hierarchy, right, with, with um, the the group with doctorates and um, high-level positions at universities. And I felt really conflicted from year to year, but I finally think I'm, I'm coming more to terms with that. Um, as a young person in, um, in a new job, I was really frustrated at a lot of our conferences um, that I felt like I, I wasn't really getting new information um, that pushed me ahead, right? I felt like the conferences were kind of hashing through the same old thing. Um, and at the same time, I realized that a lot of that same old thing was new, right, to the people who, who were joining the, in those conversations and that that was a valuable experience to them. Um, but I'm just wondering if we're not at a spot fairly soon to be able to bring people in in a better way, right? We've tried to sort of professionalize tutors by bringing them to conferences and letting them present. Um, 
but it, it seems to me like our, our gap has been, we've not mentored them very well, right? And our gap has been that we, um, that we haven't been good knowledge makers in writing center studies, right? Um, so everybody who's new kind of comes in at ground zero, and it's a really sort of reductive ground zero where, where we, um, we sort of immerse ourselves in a lot of lore, and then we sort of in, start to investigate that lore. So, you know, for the last 20 conferences I've been to, there's probably a panel on what do we call tutors? Do we call them tutors or do we call them consultants, right? So we, we keep on hashing, hashing out these same old things. Um, but it seems to me as we start to build more knowledge that, um, that helps to question the, the grand narrative that Gertrude McKinney talks about, um, as we start to build more knowledge, then I think our tutors come in at a higher level and ready to contribute to that conversation, right? Because they don't have to hash back through 40 years of old stuff um, that maybe doesn't push their, their thinking in ways that, um, that new ideas might and new investigations might. So I'm hopeful that, that we can, in future years, start to bring the tutors in at a higher level, right? So they don't have to go and see um, what did Stephen North say in, in the idea of a writing center, right? We would have moved beyond that. And, and um, I don't know, I'm hopeful about that. Hey, Michelle, I think your mic may be working. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Okay, now yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we hear you now. Yes, you can yes. hear me. Okay, great. Clint, thanks for inviting us to, to participate. Um, I don't know what the opening remarks were, but I, I want to say that so far, working with Stephen Carey from Mississippi College, the three of us have, uh, we're really excited. Um, and we're coming off of um, the last issue that uh, Lauren Fitzgerald and uh, Melissa Ionetta uh, published. And since I've been listening in uh, for the past few minutes, made me think of that issue. Um, and two articles that I think especially are really in interesting to look at side by side. And one is that um, about the local, um, is the local really mm -hmm. the local um, surveys, uh, student exit mm -hmm. surveys across three um, different institutions. Um, and then setting that next to the article about um, the professional trajectory of our, our uh, directors um, that Harry Denny and Ann Ellen Geller did, um, a study, a, a, a good study. Um, and I think those two articles do a couple things next to each other. They're really good models for writing mm -hmm. center research. And they're also, um, they, they kind of intersect in the, in the subject that you're talking about which has to do with um, the tension between our, our beliefs about what works locally and our reconnection with a larger profession. Um, I think there's a middle thing there that we need to really think about, and that is our institutions themselves. We're either very micro on our um, you know, day-to-day -day, um, students and the practices that we um, keep maintaining and regulating. And then we look at our field over here and we're not, we're not seeing that. If we, if we took a more macro approach at our institutions, we would see so many different ways that we're connected mm -hmm. in. Uh, you know, just thinking about um, coming out of the writing center and joining a larger uh, initiative at our universities or colleges around undergraduate research. Um, it's going on. It's going on in biology or or social work or something, but we're not connect we're not connecting to it. Um, there are larger initiatives that have to do with. Um, libraries and learning commons, and we really know that model. We really understand that model. Um, so I, I guess that's a long way around to saying we are fortunate that our day-to-day -day work is rich enough mm -hmm. for researching 
all the time. There's something there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we're separating our, we're kind of categorizing ourselves as these managers of, the, of these things and then people who are trying to do research. And I think that there's, there's I'm not saying it very well right now. <laughs> um, I just think we're, we're, we might be missing some opportunities in our, in our own setting. And I think um, Jackie McKinney writes about that in the, uh, you know, that, that sort of complicated life a, a writing center director can have um, and not really giving enough time for, for research and, and, right. um, and right. participating in the field and seen as more of a kind of managerial kind of position. Somebody sent us a, a, a review unsolicited of the book. Um, and other people have queried us about writing reviews for that book. And um, so that says that book is taken off. And I think we will be printing a review um, in our spring issue, right? Uh, yes, yeah, because we, we talked with Jackie uh, back in early October. I believe the, uh, the um, discussion is available. The recording is on the blog. Um, kind of switching gears a little bit, um, what's the future of a print journal in our time and what are your plans to involve um, non-print stuff other than, you talked about the discussions already that you're hosting which I think are a great idea, but anything else? Mm. Go ahead. We've had a lot of conversations uh, about that. And so the Writing Center Journal has always been traditionally hard copy and mailed. Um, we've had some frustrations just with locating electronic copies of uh, the journal articles, the database, the archive, and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're well aware of, well, the, the journal, I think, is well behind the times right now and, and needs to catch up. And so um, we're trying to think strategically about where we need to go mm -hmm. and how we need to get there. So partly we're um, still exploring all of that, but mm -hmm. you guys want to talk a little bit about some of the ideas we've had? Well, we've well, talked about open access, for example, right? Um, which is an idea that the three of us feel pretty positively about. Um, there are some, some economic situations that this journal in particular exists within that um, maybe complicate things for us, right, as we think about, well, what a writing center, uh, what an international writing center association members sort of get for their, um, their membership, and usually they, they tack on the journal, right, um, as an add-on and something that comes in the mail to them, and, you know, I don't know, we're, we're going to have to really negotiate with the board to see um, what the what IWCA board would be amenable to, but we're certainly interested in a more online presence, um, which would be hopefully more accessible to more people, um, and also um, also greener, right? Mm. Um, but boy, we've got to get those archives in better shape. I mean, it's it's just it's a shame, right, that we are in the state that we're in in terms of that. Yeah, I think Michelle. Uh, the expectation is really there, um, and and we could characterize what we have is, um, you know, we're the really the single uh, research journal of writing center field, um, and and so the three of us have been doing some research about open access, and we we really learned uh, quite a bit about its potential. Um, and where we want to stand as a um, as a journal, um, we will we will be talking with um, IWCA about uh, that direction um, that we want to go in and proposing the direction we want to go into the members. Um, and we're catching up, as Steve said. Um, we're we're making sure that the um, issues are all indexed. Will be caught up to the most recent issues soon, um, and that there are databases that do um, uh, list our journal. Um, but again, if the, <laughs> if the database links go back to um, 
the archive and the archive is not um, up to date or um, is, is having technical issues that that's that's just it's challenging um, so I, I don't know I'd be really interested to hear what other people on on this conference call now think about open access mm. Or how much, one of the things we were trying to figure out is just the, the interest in the Writing Center community to moving in a more online direction. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I'm realizing with the hard copies of journals is maybe we read them, but then we put them on shelves and they tend to get forgotten. They're very static and maybe underused. It seems that the online version gives us an opportunity to make it more interactive, dynamic, um, there's just so much potential there uh, to help the Writing Center community to interact with the journal mm -hmm. and more importantly with the articles and the ideas in the journal if we can move in some online directions. Um, but I, I think we're still trying to figure out how comfortable the Writing Center community is with online. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a really good point because there's still that extreme bias to some extent, um, that print is the only way to go, but I think that's really going away now that most science journals are pretty much completely uh, in e-format, and nobody prints anything anymore that I know of. There's very few print journals in science. Um, I think we'll, we'll mm -hmm. because of that influence, I think it'll begin to drop away. But um, yeah, I mean, I've got, I've been in the process of moving writing centers from an old place that's been there for 20 years, and trying to get rid of junk, <laughs> and not that, not that journals are junk, but they certainly do take up a lot of space, whereas I can just walk around with my iPad and have Writing Center Journal on it and have some sort of interactiveness to it. That would be awesome. Um, you know, everybody has some sort of forum now attached to articles. It would be really interesting to see the potential of that uh, uh, to our own journal. Well, here's an example of um, uh, Jackie uh, Gretsch McKinney emailed us and said, I've got, you know, the last, uh, you know, five years of Writing Center Journal, that's 10 issues, is completely in tatters because it just kind of sits around the Writing Center on the coffee tables and people, you know, pick it up and look and, you know, she said, I, I've got to have new, a new set. So we proposed that we didn't send her hard copies, but we instead send her electronic PDF. And she said that would be great. So we came up with a price point for um, electronic back issues. And I, I don't know, um, I think that might have been the first time that um, the journal has responded in that way. Um, so when people call or contact us for back issues, they were selling for ten dollars a piece. <laughs> we can make a different price point for back issues in PDF. And then you put them on your iPad. Well, with that, I mean, uh, and Anne says that she loves the idea of the forums. Um, but one question is that a lot of journals particularly in science and technology, are going where the author pays the fees for publication. Is that um, a direction, do you think, that the humanities and, and the Writing Center field is going to head into? Because, you know, subscriptions aren't going to hack it when it's online. Mm. I'll answer it in, but without answering it. Praxis, which uh, Praxis, a writing center journal, um, was born out of UT Austin students driving it. Now it's uh, um, peer reviewed. Uh, it's moving to different um, institutions as journals should, um, and it's giving people a lot of good experience working with um, putting together a journal but also putting together an online presence for um, those texts. It's 
become much more creative in the ways that things can be presented. I really like that, right? I put something in the practice years ago, and I was just putting together a dossier, and I went and looked at that. There's like 4,000 readers. Where am I going to get that? Publishing, you know, in you know, the Writing Center Journal even, right? Um, I mean, we have under 1,000 subscriptions. So I can't, I can't believe that there's any way to um, diminish the value of, of publishing online if the impact factor is readership. You're, you're going to get that. You're going to get that readership. Um, it's pretty amazing. Um, there are a couple of new journals out right now that are all online, and I've been looking at them, and I'm very impressed. So I'd like to see us move in that direction. I think Carrie hit on the point. You know, our members make choices, you know, every year to renew and say, okay, I get, I'll click on this and I'll pick the journal um, and I'll get this bundle. We need to figure out, you know, what it's going to mean to members to be a member of IWCA, what kinds of things are coming along with that. Um, and if, if the journal can be... Uh, considered a part of that, but yet remain open access, uh, I don't think we'll ever have to charge. I mean, Praxis will never charge, uh, I don't think, to publish in, uh, in their online journal. I just think the costs are, are just very different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're associated with a, with a um, professional organization or a learned society, um, the idea is that everyone does this work as professional service, and it's not paid, right? So we're not mercenary here. <laughs> we're not getting paid to do this. Um, and that's as it should be, and it should move around, and other people should get the uh, experience. Um, and it is, it is a really interesting intellectual, uh, it's kind of a new intellectual work, very stimulating. So I, I recommend people get involved with it. Hmm. Actually, Michelle, that did answer my question because I think it does it shows a direction that a lot of fields have gone in, you know, with the paid editing of articles. But then again, they're in very different circumstances, usually with um, you know, dealing with much more well, perhaps not stringent <laughs> um, stringency, but certainly they're they're a lot bigger when you're talking about science. But yeah. you know, there. Well, anyway, we don't need to go down that route. Um, hey, I was wondering if I could jump in here. Yeah, go um, ahead. Yeah, sure. So first of all, I have a thought on the open access versus printed. And one thing that I will say is, you know. It's nice to be able to have an actual bound journal to keep in on the traditional floor or whatever so that readers can pick it up when they're not busy or they can keep in mind when things are happening. Now, that doesn't mean that that's the only way they can do that, although it is nice to have something that's sort of, um, that's material. It's there. They can do that. Um, but I'm wondering what new ways, or actually I'm going to take this in a little bit of a different direction. You guys have a very good view of the field as editors and what's going on. Um, and as I think about what, uh, you know, starting my tutors in the field of uh, thinking about writing center research, I'm wondering what conversations you think are uh, important or most uh, kind of progressive or the things that are moving in terms of the field that they should know about, what conversations are most pivotal in your guys' opinion. This, I'm afraid my answer is in a little bit different direction, um, but, but it's my answer. Um, I'm not sure, well, no, there, there are a lot of different conversations that are important to have. One of, one of the really important conversations to me is a conversation about any piece of scholarship that we would like to gather around with our tutors. Um, to discuss as, as a piece of scholarship with mm. a critical eye. Like it, it seems really important to me that whatever the topic, whatever the text, that we really um, coach our students and help them see 
how to read with researchers' eyes. Um, so that if a, if a piece has a really strong methodology, they can see that and understand why. Um, or if, if, um, if the conclusions of a piece are maybe not as substantiated as we would like, they can see that and understand why. Um, so I could, I, I probably should have answered this question in a direct, in a topic type direction instead, but that's a real skill that I think is important um, for us to help build with our tutors, um, again, with an eye toward them becoming our next generation um, researchers and scholars. That's a real skill I'd like to see us um, build with them um, with real intentional conversations about any article that seems interesting for them. And that kind of fits with Anne's idea of the forum for each article, too. Mm -hmm. um, not only how do you read the articles effectively, but how do you engage with them? Uh, and partly that's a critique, partly it's an understanding, uh, partly it's a thinking in terms of what could I do next, mm -hmm. how might I build on this, how might I use it, mm -hmm. uh, and so having those, um, having that be part of the discussions. Yeah. yeah. Clint's idea, right? <laughs> you know, um, Kira, you hit on something there, you know, if we're, if we're in proximity to young people who are potentially going to go on maybe to graduate school and professional school, um, not necessarily becoming writing center directors, but they're going to move in that, in, in that academic path. Um, we have an opportunity to work with them around really good critical reading, right? Because we have something, you know, that they can see as theory into practice almost every day. Um, and I think we need to tap into that a little bit more. The other thing is, um, we've got, and, and Steve and Carrie and I have um, been able to work with lots of people from our field during the Summer Institute, and over the years get a real feel for the kind of people who attend the Summer Institute. And we're seeing a lot of people admit that their graduate school experience did really offer um, a lot of training in, you know, um, the ways that you would develop a research question, a research project, methodologies, anal analysis tools, those kinds of things. Although we know, of course, that, you know, the humanities training does offer research methods, right? They're just not the same kinds of methods that you might want to try in a RAD environment. So. I think that there's, there's a lot of room for uh, people to learn um, through these forums, maybe, or through these um, close readings of articles and discussions. Um, we had a writing retreat, our first writing retreat um, in August. Uh, and we sat around a big old table, and we took apart an article. And it was great. I mean, I learned a lot, even though I've read it many times. Um, but there were people who admitted they had master's degrees and, and a couple of them had PhDs, that they had never really done that with something in our field to help them design their own research project. And I thought it was I thought it was pretty good pretty good idea. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a cool, um, I'm going to try it, I think. I've never really thought of it that way, but this, um, that is an interesting way to approach um, our scholarship and research, is to actually look and see what other folks are doing and understand One of the best that. workshops I ever went to was Stephen Carey years ago. Um, well, he did a transcription workshop that was fantastic. And then the one we did with um, the close reading of um, Isabel Thompson's article around uh, cognitive scaffolding, I think. It, it, it was great. Well, we are just Elvis on the wall there. It says that we're just about reached our time. Um, but uh, just to wrap up, are you all going to be at NCPTW this weekend in Tampa? No. We're not. No. Uh, our plan, 
Our goal uh, in the coming couple of years is to begin making more appearances yeah. at conferences. Um, we've been spending a lot of time these last six months 